Hey guys, what's up? So the idea here is to convert one microwave oven into a generator. So I don't recommend doing this. This is just an example. It's just for educational purposes and it's just entertainment. Inside the microwave, there is a capacitor in there that holds a, a large electrostatic charge. So this project here, you really shouldn't be doing unless you have some electrical experience. So just a little warning there. Okay, so the idea here was to take a microwave oven in an emergency or something like that and to convert it into a low wattage generator to charge your cell phone or something like that or run a little light. Uh, but it's really not a practical thing to be doing. So I'll show you what I've done with the microwave oven parts. And so here it is, and it's really crudely built. So basically I wanted to make this as simple as possible, and I could only use the parts inside the microwave oven. As I've taken a piece of metal from inside the microwave, this was on the, where the transformer was. Then I've taken another piece from the bottom of the microwave. So every piece of metal on here is from the microwave and the screws as well. I've utilized the two magnets from the magnetron and I've attached them to this piece of metal here. So I'll pull this apart here and show you basically what's going on here. So it was very simple. I just have a 3 8 hole in the center. Here the shaft was just made from a piece of sheet metal. It was just twisted up uh, and it was just cut from the steel on the bottom of the microwave. This is the piece on the bottom. And then I've taken uh, this piece on the bottom here and I put it in there to reinforce this from moving. So it pushes down through the bottom of the microwave through uh, the hole where the carousel was. A piece of wire wrapped around here just to hold it so that it doesn't drop down uh, onto the transformer. As I've taken the transformer, so I've just cut the transformer apart and exposed the core of the transformer. So we have our primary coil here and our secondary coil with, with the very small windings in it. We'll take a close up look here and you can see how the magnet passes over top of the transformer core. Now the closer you get the magnet to the transformer core, the better. So basically what I have here is a single pole generator uh, and I'm only using two permanent magnets from inside of the microwave. Is when you rotate this, the magnet is gonna pass over the core of the transformer. So I'm using the secondary coil here because we're gonna get a lot higher voltage out of the secondary coil. The primary coil, we're going to get a very low voltage, like half a volt to, to maybe one volt. Uh, but out of the secondary coil, we're going to get a much larger voltage. So one wire is attached to the coil and then the other wire attached to the chassis of the transformer. Now I've connected the voltage meter up to this and I'm just going to spin it set on the AC setting. And you can see it's jumping all over the place, but if you get a constant RPM going, well, there's 10 volts. Okay, so I've hooked up some lights to the secondary coil. I have it hooked up from the secondary off to this uh, rectifying diode here. So that's going to convert the alternating current from this uh, transformer here to DC and then through these capacitors here to try to smooth this out a little bit. So as I spin this, that, those lights will stay up there. So what's going on is every time the magnet passes over, then we have induction happening. And the lights are lighting up. I'm only spinning at maybe, I don't know, 50 RPMs, let's say. So you can see that it, it's flickering on, on and off, on and off, on and off. So because of the low RPMs, unfortunately, um, you're going to get that flickering. So it's, it's not going to work very well with two magnets. Because there's only two magnets, that's why this doesn't work uh, as well as it could. Now, if you used more microwave ovens, you took a few apart, then you could take out more magnets and you'd have a better generator. You'd have more of a constant uh, voltage instead of it flickering on and off like that. So basically, this is just demonstrating how you could use magnets and transformers like your stator. Instead of a stator, you can use a transformer. And you can see that if you pass a magnet over top of the transformer core, it will produce a current. So you'd have to spin this pretty fast because we only have two magnets on here. So now if you attach a bridge rectifier, some capacitors, uh, maybe a small battery like this up to this thing and you crank it, it will uh, charge up the battery a little bit and you could run some LEDs or whatever. So it's a very, very, very low 
wattage output. So now it is possible to put more magnets on here. Now if you really wanted to do something with this, you could get uh, do the same thing with the microwave transformer and you could get some high powered neodymium magnets and you could put them onto let's say a wooden wheel or something. And you could then hook a chain to that or a, a pulley to that, to, to a larger pulley, and you could step up the, the RPMs. So I've done a small modification to the generator, and I've added two extra magnets. So now there's four magnets on this wheel here. And so we have one that's north, and the next one south, and then north, and then south. So I've done a modification to the transformer as well. I've removed the primary coil, which is this one. It has thicker windings, less turns. And I've also removed this coil, and I've removed the two shunts that were inside the transformer. These are like little iron spacers. So by removing the primary coil, I can then slide in another secondary coil from another microwave oven transformer, which I've done with this one here. So now there's two uh, secondary coils in here. So we have large coil with lots of turns, and very thin windings. So they're both inside this transformer core now. So now, essentially, there's two outputs from this one transformer core. I've hooked this coil on the top to this digital meter down here, and then I've hooked up the coil on the bottom to this analog meter. So the bottom coil here on the transformer is hooked up to this rectifying diode here, and then I've also hooked it up to these batteries. Now, you're going to need a rectifying diode to be able to convert the AC current from the transformer to DC current to charge these little batteries here. Now, this battery pack here is a NICAD, and it's 3.6 volts. This one's a nickel metal hydride. So it's, they're just random little batteries hooked up, for example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank this thing up, and we're going to take a look at the meters. So you can see that the voltage is a little higher, and I'm getting about 14 volts, roughly. Really crank it up. So crank it up, and I'll hook up the bulb. Let's see. It works, but it's a very, very low wattage output. So. So that was just an example guys, so check out other people's videos on low RPM wind generator setups and you'll see a lot of videos on there of how to uh, build a higher output wattage low RPM generator. This is a very impractical setup because we only have one single pole. This monopole setup here, it's very inefficient so it's not going to work very well uh, but the idea here was just to try to make a generator from one microwave oven. And so you can see that it kind of works. So without adding an extra coil or adding extra magnets, this setup isn't really going to work very well with only two magnets. So that was just a small monopole generator built from a microwave oven. And thanks for watching.